Hi everyone, welcome back to the best recapped movie. In 1982, a huge spaceship mysteriously landed and hovered in the sky of Johannesburg, South Africa. For three months, the ship shows no activity, so the authorities decide to infiltrate it to investigate and find many aliens, all malnourished because they ran out of food a long time ago. People reacted to these creatures' presence badly. They called these aliens derogatorily shrimp. According to the observations, the mothership released a shuttle, but it mysteriously disappeared, and no one could find it. Since the number of these extraterrestrials is estimated to be more than 1 million, the South African government, following international pressure, decides to settle them in an area called District 9. The government uses these creatures as workers, but they do not obey enough, and this causes chaos. Finally, after 20 years of continuous popular protests, the government gave in to the people's demands and forced the multinational union, MNU, the private military security company that monitors these creatures, to move their camp from the city to a remote location. Senior official, MNU, Piet Smith appoints his son-in-law and employee, Wikus, as the operations officer to guide these extraterrestrial beings. Wikus says in a televised interview before the mission that after his wedding day, this day is the most important day of his life. A security team will accompany him on this mission to pressure aliens against resisting, and of course a videographer to record the events. Wikus is worried that the security team is carrying too much military equipment. Still, Kubus, the senior security team official, gets angry and insults him. While the news covers this mission on TV, Wikus goes to District 9 with a military convoy. The extraterrestrials defend themselves against this unexpected arrival as soon as they arrive. But the security team shoots at them and they try to calm the area. Wikus goes door to door, forcing the aliens to sign an agreement that they must leave District 9 soon. Since they are interested in cat food, sometimes, Wikus uses it to convince them. Some of them accept, and others are not willing to cooperate, so Wikus orders the security team to force them. In one of the houses, he discovers the extraterrestrial birth system, and by showing it to the camera, he explains that this is a unique discovery, and then orders his security team to burn that place. Although, MNU intends to force them to migrate for humanitarian reasons, their main goal is space weapons, which are advanced and deadly and can only be used by extraterrestrials. At the same time, Christopher, his little son CJ, and his friend Paul are looking for a liquid belonging to extraterrestrials in the garbage. CJ finds the piece Christopher is looking for and gives it to his father, and after hearing the gunshot, they go home excitedly. After 20 years of trying to collect and create this device, they get the technology they want. As soon as Wikus knocks on the door, Christopher asks Paul to hide the device, and he and CJ immediately run away and go home. Paul opens the door, but he doesn't want to cooperate, so they threaten him with a gun. Wikus goes to his house out of curiosity and finds the missing guns and that device. He inadvertently activates the device, which causes a black liquid to be sprayed on his face. After that, he threatens Paul to explain, but he gets angry and throws a security guard, then throws Wikus on a burning barrel. While Christopher hears from behind the wall, Kubus and his men quickly arrive at the scene and kill him immediately. Wikus also sees that his hand is burned. However he does not want to go to the hospital, and after receiving medical care, he decides to continue his mission. At the next house, they see CJ at the front door. He throws a candy at him, and CJ immediately throws it at his heed, which makes him angry. Christopher comes out, and they force him to sign the dismissal agreement, but he refuses, and Wikus threatens him, that, in this case, they will take his child from him. He enters the house to find CJ, but finds some suspicious equipment. He suddenly feels dizzy and vomits a strange liquid. Wikus is forced to stop his mission, and when they leave District 9, he feels hungry, and they stop in front of a restaurant. He eats with great enthusiasm, but suddenly, a little later, a black liquid comes out of his nose. Worse, when he goes to work, the symptoms become more severe, and his nails are strangely separated from his fingers. Christopher and CJ try to find the device, but there is no trace. On the other hand, the aliens are willing to trade their advanced defense system and weapons to get cat food. A Nigerian gang led by Obasanjo does such deals with them. Obasanjo hires a sorcerer who believes he can gain their powers and abilities if he feeds on them. By trading with them, Obasanjo manages to acquire many of their weapons. Still sometimes he tries to become them by eating them but it fails every time. Wikus enters the house in a bad and unnormal mood and is surprised by his wife, Tanya, who has organized a party for his promotion. He tries to show that he is fine, but in reality, he is not, and he has to go to the bathroom while talking to his father-in-law, Smith. A little later, 
When he blows out the cake's candle, he feels sick and feels the symptoms of an alien in himself, and after vomiting a black liquid, he faints and falls to the ground. The next morning at the hospital, while Tanya is sitting outside worrying, the doctor unwraps his bandage, and it becomes clear that Wikus's hands have turned into alien hands, and he panics. The doctor informs, M and U, about this, and a security team enters the room. While Wikus begs and Tanya is not allowed to meet her husband, the agents put him in a bag and take him out of the hospital by helicopter. In the specialized laboratory, MNU, a nurse finds the device sprayed on his face and gives it to the doctors. After that, while being taken for the tests, Wikus realizes that, MNU, is brutally researching and studying the bodies of aliens. He is being tested on extraterrestrial weapons for evaluation. To their surprise, his new hand can use these weapons. They force him to shoot an alien, and he is tormented by doing this and suffers from the situation he is in. After the experiments, researchers and scientists explain to Smith that Wikus's body is changing, and he will become one of them. Since he is precious, governments and organizations will be looking for him. So, they decided to use his flesh, blood and brain for their experiments. They believe they can create a large army of extraterrestrials using these weapons. While visiting his daughter Smith tells her she can no longer see Wikus and should forget him. On the other hand, while the doctors, M and U are about to pierce his chest, he frees himself with the power of his left hand. After he attacks them, he manages to escape from the laboratory, and Kubus and his security team, M and U, search for him. Wikus also tries to call his family and friends after stealing a passerby's clothes and cell phone, but everyone ignores him. While entering a restaurant to prepare food, the news announces that he is wanted due to pollution, and people run away from the restaurant upon hearing it. He immediately eats a few pieces of food, runs away in a hurry, and decides to return to District 9. He spends the night in difficult conditions in that place. Next morning, he is forced to buy cat food, but when he eats it, he realizes that he has lost his teeth. At this moment, Tanya calls him, and Wikus claims that her father conspired against him. While she is crying, he asks Tanya not to disappoint him. Tanya hangs up in a bad mood, and Wikus decides to cut off his hand, but he is in too much pain when he cuts off only one of his fingers, so he can't continue. He hides in a house when he realizes the security team is looking for him. He sees Christopher and realizes he is working strangely with computer systems. Still, a few moments later, he falls unconscious on the ground due to bleeding. Christopher takes him to his secret room, and when he regains consciousness, he asks him about the device. Wikus explains that the people in the experiment took it from him. Next, Wikus is surprised by the hidden and strange room he is in. Christopher and CJ explained that they needed that device to return to the mothership which they achieved after 20 years of effort. Christopher explains that by returning to the mothership, they could stop the process of his transformation into an alien and return him to his previous state. At first, Wikus is happy, but soon, they both know it is impossible to get that device. Christopher says that there might be a way to get it, but on the other hand, Wikus doesn't have much time. When night falls, Wikus goes in front of a mirror and notices that his transformation process is progressing rapidly. At the same time, Tanya calls him again, this time, he promises her that he will fix everything and has a plan for it. Unaware that Tanya has contacted him under surveillance, M and U, so they can track him down. CJ tells his father that he misses their planet, but he explains that they can't go there without that device and that they will be moved to a new camp. Wikus hears this and tells Christopher that this camp is not a better place. After ensuring he will be fine by getting that device, he explains that he has an idea to get a weapon. Tomorrow morning, he goes to the Nigerian base where they took a lot of illegal weapons in exchange for giving cat food to aliens, and says he has enough money to buy those weapons. With humiliation and violence, they take him to their boss, where he makes his request again. Still, Obasanjo, ignoring his request, notices Wikus's physical changes and orders them to cut off his hand so that he can eat it. Wikus accidentally finds an extraterrestrial weapon there and shoots them with it before they cut off his hand, incredibly killing all of Obasanjo's men. He threatens him with the gun and runs away with a bag full of guns while Obasanjo says, I'm coming for you. After that, M and U, sends a security team to Christopher's house to find Wikus, but when they enter, no one is there. Kubus decides to find him himself, but simultaneously, there is a huge explosion at the front, M and U's door. It happens, and Wikus and Christopher break into the building with extraterrestrial weapons. After killing some of agents, they finally manage to enter the laboratory, and Christopher is shocked to see that his people have become lab rats for humans. Wikus finds the device and urges Christopher to leave immediately. However, he is still in shock and stares at the dismembered alien corpse, 
allowing the agents to get there, and a gunfight ensues. Wikas kills some of them with the deadly weapon. After Christopher finds himself, he invents an explosive bomb with the equipment in the laboratory. With it, they succeed in breaking into the parking lot. They return to District 9 by stealing one of MNU's cars, and Kubis and his men are chasing to find them. Get down there! Hurry up, they're coming! CJ enters the shuttle to perform the pre-departure setup. As Wikus questions him about his recovery process, Christopher explains that it's taking longer than he thought. He says it will take three years because there is not enough liquid to feed the shuttle. Wikus gets angry and knocks Christopher unconscious then he immediately enters the shuttle and puts the device to activate the IT. Kubus and his men enter the house and threaten Christopher to open the shuttle door, but he does not cooperate. The ground shakes and Kubus and his men leave in fear, revealing that the shuttle that disappeared years ago after being released from the mothership is now slowly taking off. Kubus orders his men to stop it, and after firing a few missiles, one of them hits the shuttle and causes it to crash. Christopher kneels in despair, and after he is arrested, Kubus and his men search the shuttle. While CJ is hiding, they arrest Wikus and take him inside the car. Obisanjo orders his men to attack, and the MNU cars are shot by the Nigerian gang one after the other, causing them to crash. The fire between them continues until they get Wikus and violently take him to their boss while leaving Christopher in the car, ignoring him. CJ tries to reactivate the shuttle, and in addition, he manages to activate the mothership and even other alien technologies, including the combat system in the Nigerian base. While Obasanjo and all his men are trying to kill Wikus, the combat system, by scanning them, collects the bullets that are fired at him. After the Nigerian's weapons are empty, he sends the bullets toward them, and all are killed. He kills Obasanjo with a fatal shot. Kubus finds Christopher and tries to get him to talk by beating him up. Still, he stubbornly doesn't cooperate, and after seeing this, Wikus decides to enter the mech armor and confront them. Kubus and his men are shocked to see him, and when he escapes, Kubus orders them to chase him. Since Christopher does not cooperate with them, he orders them to kill him as well. Wikus hears this from inside the mech armor and is enraged. He returns to save him, blasting the agents with his advanced weapon before they kill Christopher. He supports Christopher until he reaches the shuttle, and he promises to come back to save him in three years as a thank you. Christopher enters the shuttle and hugs CJ, then by adjusting the mothership, he sets it in move. They manage to take off while Wikus is still fighting the gunfire. Wikus collapses from the intensity of the gunfire, sees the shuttle rejoining the mothership, and tells Christopher to go home. While losing most of his power, he gets out of the armor and pulls himself on the ground. Kubus approaches him to kill him while Wikus's transformation into an alien has progressed to the point where his left eye is yellow and swollen. He points the gun at him, but suddenly, a bunch of aliens come to his aid, and after attacking Kubus, they cut him to pieces. Christopher also adjusts the mothership to return to their planet. He moves towards the sky, and the people on this unforgettable day excitedly stare at the sky and rejoice that the mothership has left the Earth. This is the last image of Wiku's scene. After that, one can only speculate what might have happened to him. In a recent interview at his workplace, he showed the camera a photo of Tanya in a wedding dress, and believed that she was an angel. Despite everyone thinking he's dead, Tanya believes he's fine because she found a handmade metal flower in front of the house. It turns out that the metal flower was made by Wikus. Now, he's fully transformed into an extraterrestrial, hoping that maybe Christopher will return one day. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.